Hi, Tracy. Who's here? Come say hi. Happy Thursday. I see four people here. Who's going to say hi to me? Hello, Lynn. Oh, no, going through seeds. That's not good. That's not good. Will you resist the urge of buying more seeds? The urge, the big urge of seeds. Well, uh, my collection's been out for a couple of weeks now. Uh, it's been on my kitchen table since I don't have an office, and uh, <laughs> I go through it very often. I'm almost done um, using the knowledge I have gained with the course, online course I'm following, and I'm applying it to, um, to my garden plan, and uh, <laughs> I'm almost done. Next step is to draw everything out on a clean sheet, because I did have to erase a couple of times. Uh, no, just going through all I have collected over the past few weeks. Nice. Storing seeds, getting seeds, receiving seeds. It's almost spring. Someone told me yesterday, I don't know if it's true. Uh, she follows someone on, um, TikTok and he or she predicts spring with the bees behavior. And supposedly, the bees says that it's going to be an early spring. I hope they're right. It would be fun. Hello, Marilyn. Uh, I am waiting for more packages of seeds in the mail, but that's Marilyn's. <gasps> oh, no, Marilyn. How dare you? You influenced Lynn buying more seeds. What'd you get? We, we have a tendency of doing that. Ooh, I didn't try this one. Ooh, this looks fun. So I decided to try something new. Uh, last Sunday, I asked if I had, uh, if you guys had ideas to create content for future videos. But then I thought on Thursdays, I can answer questions that I have either during my lives on Sunday or during the um, during videos that I do. And I have, if you're watching this on replay, after I explain the seed packages, I will be answering Remy's question from Rem's Family Farm. How much seed do I plant compared to how much I want to grow in total? And then Tracy from T Hand One for One Homestead asked me, um, how do I jug like, go through it all being a lone homesteader, mom, wife, blah, 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 blah. So those are the two questions I got. And I thought instead of creating videos, I would just answer these questions live. No remorse, no remorse. <laughs> I see Marilyn going like this. Hello, Prep Fraternity Homestead. Hello, Remy. He's the one that asked, uh, asked the questions on Sunday. He did ask me also how many pounds I was uh, expecting for Shed Wars. I could answer that after. And I did have also Tracy ask me uh, what I'll do for my Shed War audition video. But I'll keep that a secret. Okay, so seed packages. Uh, we are about... Depending where you are in the world, I am in zone 5B. We are near time to sow seeds soon. I know I'm experimenting in my high tunnel, so I am growing food four weeks prior to my original plan. So I am going to be starting seeds very soon. But on a regular growing garden, it's going to be time to sow some celery seeds, some onion seeds, green uh, green onions, and blah, 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 blah. So it's going to be seed starting time. And if you're a new gardener or um, you struggle a little bit understanding a seed package, I thought uh, I would either answer your questions or share the knowledge that I have acquired over the past years. 
I also have seeds coming in the mail, but it's only fault. Well, Marilyn, uh, technically I was done ordering seeds, was wrong. <laughs> I ordered some seeds and I'm supposed to receive them all by the end of next week. I admit, <laughs> I love seeds. Uh, I got more zinnias, Roma tomato seeds, which I just found. I bought some from M.I. Gardener, Greek oregano rose and purple nasturtium and rosemary. Nice. So only on double of what I have already bought. There is such a thing as um, seed math now. <laughs> hi, Darren. I'm guessing it's Darren. If Bridget is with you, hi. Uh, if the cards have been smiling on me today. Well, I think so. I think so. I hope they, um, they were smiling on you too. Welcome back. Grab your tea. Okay. So um, I took out the C packages I have from the companies that I ordered. So you might recognize a couple. Some sadly don't have any information on them. And I'll start with those. Yeah, uh, so this, this is what part of what I'm doing, Dave. Hi, Dave, by the way. Uh, I am using up all of my seeds that are old for experimenting. <clears throat> so if I plan to example I want to push the limits in so transplants and peppers earlier than I normally do in the high tunnel or rah 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 those will be older seeds in like the tunnel experiment I'm doing that I'm going to be starting sowing seeds I think this week or next week I have to check my schedule I have a tendency of using up older seeds in that way I can refresh my inventory, but with only the varieties that I enjoy. But I do get tempted with other stuff. <laughs> the temptation sometimes is good, is big. So uh, here's a Quebec scene package I have. This is for red carrots. There's basic knowledge on this. And then it says for instruct complete instruction, always go back to the website. Um, here's a trick. When I have these types of packages that has minimum information on the back or on the front, this is where I'm going to go and I'm going to complete the information that's lacking on here. Like example, spacing, uh, here they do say spacing, but they don't say the days to maturity. Uh, they don't say, uh, if I can plant it in fall, like there's like things missing. So I'm going to do some research and this is where I'm going to complete the seed package. Uh, same thing. This is from rainbow seed. This one has literally no information. I went on the website and I just completed it with the ones that I needed. And well, you get the point. Like I have another one from echo seed and I just started writing, uh, I'm going to go on the website and I'm going to fill in all the information that's lacking. So in the future, when I am taking out those seeds, if I enjoy them, I'll have everything I require to plant them on the future years. Hello, welcome back. Seeds are good. And this is, uh, I'm going to go through in depth with this. There were seeds that were germinated over a hundred years. So not because your seeds are five years old. That means you're going to throw them out. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, maybe I'll start an old seed section. <laughs> yeah, it would be a good idea. I know we make fun of having so many seeds, but there is something comforting seeing all those packages I have. Yes, it, it is a feeling that cannot be explained, having a lot of seeds, and it's, to have a big collection is a good problem to have. I would say, it, especially now, <laughs> especially now. And this is something I do. I had two of my friends that real. I think I said this prior, like many, many lives back. Two of my friends sold everything and bought Rawland with a house on it and the potential of 
creating a homestead. So I went through my entire collection, every single seed I have collected from my plants that were old, I passed them on to her. Um, and I asked her which, uh, both of them, what they prefer. And then I just went through all of my seed collection and I told them they're older seeds. So if you want five plants, make sure to eat at least double sowing the seeds. I know people are going to go, oh my God, you're giving them old seeds. Like how, how mean? No, it's because if I don't use them up, I'll lose them down the road and I won't be able to harvest food from it. And they will be able on a zero dollar budget, try out to grow food. So the first year, uh, one of them planted most of the seeds that I sent to her. And she says it was so fun. Like I didn't have to invest that much of a budget to start growing food. And I made sure to give her all like I gave her sunflowers, zinnias, marigolds, uh, all the companion planting for to create a like a beautiful environment with a raw garden and peppers, tomatoes. Um, I gave her herbs that I collected, all of that. And, and then it, she just started with a small, obviously it's a small collection, but after the first year, she was able to determine what she liked and what she didn't. And it didn't cost her a fortune. And I did do that for my second friend. Sadly, she wasn't able to open her garden but she did last year, like the first year she wasn't able to do it. But then the second year she was there, she planted almost all of the seeds that I sent to her and she loved it. Her collection was bigger, but it gave her like something to start with and to experiment without investing so much money into it. So if you have older seeds and you know someone that wants to grow food, might as well share it because staying in your seed collection, if you're not planning on sowing them in the next five years, share them. Boop, boop, boop. We only had to buy a few seeds, which was good. Nice. Are the planting instructions, separation, distance, depth, and such accurate from the package? The... The information you have on packages um, are guidelines. Uh, if I take, I'm going to take Jardin Lecumen's package. This one has almost all the information on it. I hope I can zoom in close enough. Wait, here. See, like, uh, the depth five millimeters. I'm sorry, I don't remember the millimeters conversion, but that's, uh, that's not a lot. And then the spacing, the temperature needs to be sown, the spacing between the plants, and then the spacing in the rows and how, and this one enjoys a lot of sun. So on a farm, there are certain spacing that they they make it wider because of equipment passing in the um, in the rows. Some of the uh, spacing is oriented market style gardening, and the tools uh, are ha like are, they're handheld; they're not machinery. So the spacing between the rows will be smaller. So you just let's just say they say uh, a foot between each plant. In my raised bed gardens, if they say a foot between each plant and then a foot and a half between each rows, uh, and I want to condense as much as I can, I go one foot all over. In my in-ground garden, I follow the, the row separation. So if it says one feet of spacing between the plants and the row, that's what I'll do. But if they say to have 18 inches between each plant row wise, I follow that because it's in ground in my tools that I hold will need to pass uh, for my in ground garden. The raised bed, I am able just to kneel down and just grab everything by hand. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to use the hand tools in my raised bed. I haven't ordered them yet, so I don't know. That's why I kind of have a tendency of doing two different things. Um, uh, 
<laughs> no, no. Uh, the chalkboard is for my kids, and it's paint that um, my – it's just, like, chalk paint, and I just we, – that's one of the first projects we did that we never finished. My house is full of those. Like, we start – we start something, never finish it. We start something else, never finish it. It's it's a frustration of mine. But uh, this is made for kids for um, drawing and uh, instructions and stuff like that. No, I do not put seed math there because it's so important. I don't want my kids to erase it. I know garlic can be planted a lot closer than suggested. Here's the thing. Um, last... Four years, I planted garlic every four inches. They say four to six inch. Here's the thing. You can plant it at four inch of spacing, but your bulbs will be smaller. If you plant it at six inches apart, your bulbs will be bigger. So that means, let's just say music, garlic is about four to seven cloves, average. So instead of being, uh, if you if you sew them at four inches apart, you're going to have a small to medium bulb. If you plant them six inches, you're going to have a medium to large bulb. If you plant them, I think it's eight inches apart, this I'm not sure, then it's considered a large bulb. It all depends what you prefer. Garlic is prefer, like its preference. This year I tried... My plank of spacing, I did do a video about that. My plank is five inches and a quarter. And then I just planted just a little bit further. So my spacing this year is probably five inch and a half, five inch and three quarters. We'll see. I'll see if my bulbs get bigger this year. Mine are considered, uh, like from years prior, small to medium. I am hoping to get them at least to the medium size. Uh, other than that, there is perennial versus annual. Perennial means, depending your growing zone, year after year after year after year, it's going to come back. Example, thyme is a perennial. You can start it from seeds. This is a ferme tournesol. Um, this one is very detailed in the back. But it's in French, but I can translate it. Uh, it says to start it 10 weeks prior to your last frost. The depth is an eighth of an inch. Spacing in rows is 12 inches. Spacing in between rows is 12 inches. And then height of the plant is 6 to 12, depending um, how like, tightly it's spaced. And then the temperature of germination, uh, the days to like the, the numbers of days to germinate, the days to maturity, and then the how much sun. So all of that is in the back of the seed package. Oh, I just missed a couple of questions. Okay, so uh, what is days to, no, sorry, I'm going to answer perennial. So perennial comes back every single year. Certain zones lower than mine, four, three, two, one, some of the uh, perennials will not come back. And I took out a C package that was written that. Where did I put it? There it is. Okay, so this is an MI Gardener um, hyssop. I really love this. On the side here, other side. On this side, it says it's perennial. It needs full sun. And then here, you have from zone three to nine. So hyssop will come back every single year from zone three to nine. Uh, since I have that, this is one of the favorite seed packages I <laughs> company I love because of the instructions in the back. It tells you everything you need to know. Eight to 10 weeks before your last frost, this is where you start your seeds. If it's direct sown, it actually says direct sown instead of planting inside. And then you have all the instructions here of how to plant it. I don't know if you guys can see it. And then there is a harvest section with tips and tricks sometimes if it's a finicky plant. Um, days to maturity. There's two types of plants. Um, I'm going to take... Uh, squashes, cucumbers, and tomatoes. 
So like this, like this. And for example, summer squash. Okay, so summer squash, when you look at the, at, oh, that's a cucumber. When you look at the, cuca, uh, at the um, package, it says 50 days to maturity. And if you look cucumbers, this one says 55 days. And another one, 50 days. Usually cucumbers, um, zucchinis, in winter squash, I would direct sow them because that's what is suggested. They don't like to be transplanted. But because of all the pest pressure I have, I sow them now three seeds per four inch um, pots. And then I leave it, I cut it down to two and I transplant it. The reasoning behind that is because when the plant is transplanted outside, it's strong enough to handle the pest pressure right away. It's established, it's been hardening off, it's not like super fresh. And when those little cucumbers beetle comes out, they're probably gonna survive. So this is why I do that. But if you look at that, when it says 50 days to maturity, that means when you take the seed and you put it in the soil. So when you do that, and I, that's why I choose four inch pots. I don't want them to get root bound. I don't want to be, them to be stressed when I transplant them. So the day that I start the seed is the day that I start the countdown of approximate date of having a first fruit. For a tomato, it says to sow about six to eight weeks before your last frost and then a 95 day maturity. So this is the tomato. It's a huge, long tomato. One of the big ones for uh, tomatoes. What, like, you start your seeds six to eight weeks before your last frost, and then it takes seven days average to germinate. And then you're going to keep them in your house for about four or five weeks. And then you're going to harden them off and transplant them. The days to maturity starts on the day after you transplant it. So that means from that date, you calculate the 95 days. It's not from the time that you sowed the seed inside the house. So there's two differences with that. So the cucumber family, the squash family, uh, melons, depending of the variety, especially the northern ones, uh, you could direct sow them. But melons, since they like the heat, I start the seeds inside the house. Um, my last frost day is the weekend of the conference. Uh, when's the conference again? The 8th? Um, and my gardener is awesome. Yes. Mine says May 23rd. Yay, no, it's later. <laughs> At least full moon is early June. That gives me some chances to plant early. Uh, this will be no, this will be my first year planting and my gardener seeds uh i have never been disappointed with you no know, there was one package that i received that i sewed all of it and none of it came out but like on so many packages that i have you know it happens i wrote to them in the they sent me uh a change uh they sent me a new one with the the next order i had I was placing an order regardless uh, because I just ordered that seed, pa seed package. That's why they granted me that. So the day we planted outside is when we count. No, the day after. I start the day after. And this is in ideal conditions. So that means if your plant is leggy, stressed, root bound, lacking nutrients, like let's just say it's a tomato plant and it's purple when it's supposed to be green, your days to maturity will not be accurate. It's going to recuperate from whatever stress it's going through and it can take a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then when they reach the ideal conditions, they will start the countdown to, produ like the, to produce their fruits. Um, the sixth, you're lucky. My last expected frost is May 12th, but I'm using May 18th this year. 
I am 50 miles from MR Gardner, so we have the same climate. Nice. Are you talking about cucumbers? May 31st. Uh, I'm using May 18th, but I'm not planting anything outside uh, that's frost tender. Uh, Marilyn, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the new moon, I mean, the, the, the moon is on June 5th. And usually that's where I plant most of my peppers. And tomatoes, I, it depends of the night temperatures, tomatoes and um, eggplants. I have to go through my notes, but if the if it goes under 20 at night, 20 Celsius, I don't plant. Um, I don't plant tomatoes or eggplant because they're heat loving plant. They're going to get stunted if it gets below 20. I can't remember if it's 20 or 25. I'm lost, but I have to go through my notes. And um, if they get stunted, well, the days to maturity will be off. Yeah. So days to maturity means for plants that you start inside is from the, like, if, if it started inside, there's a certain amount of weeks inside, and then there's a certain amount of time that you trans transition them. And then once it's planted, that's when the countdown starts. For plants that is considered direct sown, uh, I normally take the next day. So let's just say it says 50 days to maturity. Uh, and I plant it today, I'm going to start counting tomorrow as day one. I am not planting anything outside this year till the first week of June. I usually do it the May 24 weekend, but the last two years had bit me. Yeah, that's why I no longer take May 12th. I'm not sure. Um, I think I said that in the my video I posted on Tuesday. I take May 18th because it buys me a week and a week is precious. Usually my plants of tomatoes are ready to be transplanted outside by the long weekend of May, which is May 20th, I think. Around that, May uh, the long weekend of May, long weekend of May, long weekend of May. Long weekend of May. No, long week. Okay, so this year it would have been um, May 22nd. Hello, Star Homestead India. So normally I would plant all of everything uh, on May 20th for flowers, tomatoes, and stuff like that, eggplants, and then May 29th for peppers. But the last couple of years I've been bitten the bum because of a risk of frost on May 28th to May 30th. So now by taking May 18th, my tomatoes are ready to be transplanted outside for May 25th, so a week after. In the way that my schedule is designed, I am sowing peppers so that I transplant them outside for June 5th, around those times. And I always make sure to check the weather a couple nights before I'm planning on transplanting them outside. And by doing that, if it does not reach at least 20 degrees Celsius, I rather not plant them. I rather put them outside during the day so they continue their acclimation and then bring them back inside at night. And by putting my date further, I, I will only maybe have to do it for a couple of days instead of a cup like a weekend plus 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 because if you do that you're gonna get root bound plants and you're gonna go back to your plants will need to recuperate from the shock and then start producing <clears throat> did I mention everything also you have biannuals some like carrots uh, onions Marilyn can correct me if I forgot some. They're going to produce a fruit. Like if you sow seeds this year of a onion and then it forms like this miniature bulb and you miss it when you do your harvest, 
Well, it's going to go in dormancy. And then in the spring, it's going to look like it's going to do an onion, but it's not. It's just going to go like a green onion. And then there's going to be like this flower and it's going to create seeds for, um, for you to collect. I know parsley does that. Onions does that. Carrots does that. There's a couple of biannuals. It's written on your, um, uh, did I take out a biannual uh, seed package? I did not. Um, Um, okay, usually the carrots would say biannual, but now it says annual. Okay. My older seed says, oh, there it is. It's older MI Gardener seeds package. It says biannual. That means if you want to collect seeds from carrots, you have to wait. You have to leave them in the ground and then wait that it produced this like lovely flower and then the flower is going to dry out and then you'll be able to collect the seeds. Um, last thing I wanted to say was hybrids. I know people, when I say this word hybrid, their teeth go, I don't want to buy hybrids. Um, hybrids are not a bad thing. The only uh, sad thing is you can't collect the seeds from a hybrid. A hybrid is a parent A with a parent B that is put together and it creates this F1 variety. If you try to collect the seeds from this F1 variety, you're going to get the result of parent A or parent B. You're not going to get the true uh, variety that you're looking for. It's still going to produce, like example, if you collect seeds from a tomato that's hybrid, you're going to get parent A, parent B of the tomato. So like this one, I have a Sunrise Sauce Roma, and it says that it's hybrid. So hybrid is either this or F1. Do I have an F1 somewhere here? Oh, there it is. Uh, right next to 40 days, it says F1. That means it's hybrid. First generation. I think that's what it means. So you're still going to get a tomato, but it's not going to be what exactly you collected. And hybrids actually happen in your garden. So let's just say that you collect the seeds of any of your vegetables in your garden. They could have cross-pollinated and create a hybrid without you knowing. Mm -mm. I think you're right. I think, I think you're right. I don't know. It, it would make sense. Any tips for red onions? I really want to be successful with those this year. I got five last year. That was the best I had done. Okay. So onions, I'm still in the learning curve. So my, my goal two years ago was to grow onions from seeds. I succeeded, transplanted them, and they were puny. They were very small. And then last year, I was able to continue growing them from seeds. And then um, I got to transplant them outside. And then I was able to get small to medium onions. The tricks that I found is to have... Um, I sowed in 72 plug trays my onions. I sow about four seeds per plug and remove any, any plus. So if I, the, the max that I want in the plug tray is three. And then I transplant them about six, last year I transplanted them six inches apart. Well, it's the same thing as the garlic. The closer you're gonna sew them together, so the cluster of three, if it's close to the other cluster of three, the closer they are, the smaller your onions will be. So this year I'm trying, uh, I think it's 8, 10, or 12 inches apart. I would have to look at my notes. But I'm trying to, the, each cluster of three to be uh, more further away. And instead of doing five rows like I did last year, I'm doing three rows. 
and my rows are 30 inches wide by 15 or 16 feet deep. So this is what I'm trying this year. Um, I planted mine last year in compost, 100% compost, thinking that I would not need to fertilize them. Um, so this year I'm going to do what the Académie Potagère, my online course, suggests. I am not done doing that. Um, I'm, where I am in my training is opening uh, a new garden space. So I'm not there at the um, how to take care of every single, like the fertilization of every single items. But this is the tips that I have collected over the year for the onions. I saw somewhere, um, Tracy said about garlic to, I, I am down to two inches square between garlic, still getting medium large bulbs, okay? Nice. Mm -mm. The moral of the story is do not start your, start your plant too early or it will slow them down or get leggy. That is very well said. Uh, do I have my notes? I did suggest the uh, growing... The seed starting calculator from Johnny Seeds. And um, I want to show you. So, I don't know if you guys can see. I hope you can see. Um, like example, basil. You started six weeks before your last frost. That means it's April 13 that you start it. And then it goes outside May 25th. So this is my calculation. And then if it says, where's tomatoes? Tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. Where's tomatoes? Okay, so tomatoes I have that you start them six to eight weeks before your last frost. The earliest I can sow them is March 30th, and the latest is April 20th. And you can start transplanting them outside May 25th to June 1st. If you don't have enough grow lights and your operation is super, 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 super minimum, I would always go to the latest. So, for example, tomatoes. Instead of using March 30th, I would go closer to April 20th. You're going to have smaller plants. They're going to be more compacted and less stressed that way. If you do have the operation and enough lights, well, then this is where you can go and start your seeds on March 30th. Like, it all depends of you, your setup, the amount of time you have to invest, like you can invest for starting seeds. And this is where you're going to figure out with experience what is best. Should I start earlier or later? Um, ba -ba -ba. yeah, I planted mine in, in a very large bucket. I had three large onions and two small. I've never planted onions in a container. I've always planted in the soil. Um, also from what I've learned, um, soil for root vegetables needs to be at least eight inches deep or 10 inches deep. So if your bucket is at least 12 inches deep, it should have given you, unless you didn't have the correct soil for the bucket. This is why like container gardening, um, I try certain things every year, but I'm not, it's not like my most comfortable subject because like I haven't really got that much success out of it. MR Gardener was doing an experiment and said he thought two inches was the sweetest spot for garlic. Awesome. If he if it works for you, uh, it's awesome. That means you can use up um, all of your, like, instead of using two, three garden beds, you can only use one. I'm just curious. What does my sheet say? No, uh, it's right. I forgot. It's on my computer. It's right in front of me. Um, you see, it says six inch. 
in my training. But I would, you know, I would have to test that theory. I would probably do like a small garden bed of two inch and then another garden bed next year. I'll have to remember this experiment. <laughs> um, the old Alabama Garner has passed, but his videos are still on. For bigger onions, remove the dirt around them as they mature for bigger bulbs. Okay. No, take this down. I did remember about that. But I, I did remember reading this, but I don't think I've done it. I did remove some of the weeds around the bulbs, and it probably did remove some of the soil around. That's probably why I did have some big ones. But since I didn't particularly like take care of every individual bulb, maybe that's why some of them were really small. I didn't have a lot of plants survive hardening off, so I only planted like eight onions. Okay. Hardening off is a technique and it's an art. <laughs> I start, uh, I, the way that my house is positioned in the morning, I, if it's warm enough, like I check the temperature outside, if it's warm enough, I have like tables that's not even exposed to the sun. It's a hundred percent shade. And this is where I let them like until I think it's like 12 in the afternoon. There's no sun. And then I bring them back in. And I do that for a couple of days. And then one day, the first day, I'm going to start bringing them back in like around 12. And then the day after that, 12.15. And then the day after that, 12.30. And then the day after that. And I just give them like 10, 15 minutes every single day more. But I don't expose them to full sun. Once they've gone through that, I um, start doing the complete opposite. I take them out when the sun is like setting but further. So about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the sun is not completely on the plants. It's there, but not 100%. So then this is where I take them out. And the, depending of the temperature outside of 5 o'clock at night, this is where I'm going to let them... If it goes down 20, 15, 20, this is where I bring them back inside. And I do that for most of my plants. And then once they've been through the morning and afternoon sun, I, I start the full exposure of the sun. But since I didn't, like I probably will have it. This is the technique that I'm doing now, but maybe I'm going to learn something new with the course that I'm following and I'll gladly share that in the spring. <laughs> I've said everything I know about seed packages. Oh, I did forget one thing. Some say they're annuals like calendula. Calendula is an annual, but if you don't do anything, on your patch of calendula and you just let them die off, the snow's going to go on top of it. And then the year after that, it's going to re -sew, and you're going to have beautiful calendula coming back the year after. Borge does the same thing. Zinnias sometimes can do the same thing. Cosmos also does the same thing. And I have that problem also with sunflowers. Last year, I had to kill over 100 sunflower plants. Thank God they were small. I was able to feed them to the chickens. But it was hard. And those ones that were seeded by the squirrels, those are the ones that reach like super high. I had an intimacy an int intimacy fence of sunflowers last year that were sown only by squirrels. And the ones that I sowed from seeds were so small and so puny and they did not even be like, they were not majestic like the one the squirrels sowed for me. Uh, did I forget? I'm just going to look at the seeds that I took out. Oh, yeah. Another one. Sometimes in the back of your seed package, there's, uh, they say that you have to do stratification. Stratification means that you have to put them in the fridge for a certain amount of time, and that's written on your seed package. I have fireweed that I want to sow, and it says 60 days of stratification. Uh, lavender, I think it's three weeks. And uh, there's certain, there's other um, 
there's other ones, but it does say stratification. If you're curious and you have like a C package that does not have that much information, you can always Google it, um, the name of the plant, and then should I do stratification? And it's going to... Um, it's going to tell you. There's a lot of flowers, um, perennial flowers that requires stratification. But since I'm not too much into flowers at the moment, the ones that I have can be started from seeds. And the last thing is planting in the late summer, fall. Some of my seed packages specifically says that they're going to do much better if planted in the fall. Uh, I have Chinese pink radishes. Uh, watermelon radishes, uh, this carrot that says that they prefer being planted in the fall, they're going to be better. And some actually, there's like cabbages that I have will turn more purple because of the uh, cold temperatures. So make sure if it says to be planted in the fall, you can try to plant it in the spring to see what it does. But if it's, if it's specifically designed for fall planting, well, try to follow what it says. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, that's not for me that's not for me that's not for me I am planting a lot of things for fall this year and saying the heck spring <laughs> summer planting um this year uh I'm trying to push the limits like I've made a plan and let's just say it says to transplant my cabbages on April 30th I'm gonna play the lottery and try to transplant it at least a week earlier so that I, and I'm going to put row covers on top, obviously, for cold, this will be only for cold, hardy crops. So that means in the heat of the summer, when the, uh, if, well, this, this is like really, if I can't afford that much row covers, in the heat of the summer, I won't have that much pest pressure. Like the pest will come out almost when they're ready to be harvested. If I can't, transplant them a week earlier I am really in need to invest in those row covers like this is like on my first priority list row covers for onions for beets swiss chard uh garlic and uh cold hardy crops because they're eating my crop like in a couple of days uh it's horrible and I'm trying to make this year optimizing my time so that on Sundays this is something I really 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 want to do Sunday is supposed to be downtime but since I have so much to do I really am able to have down periods during the summer so if I can optimize um, my time by having those roll covers in stand-up tools instead of being on my knees that would be nice Ooh. Hello, Marcy. Yes, don't forget to do the thumbs up. So, answering the questions that I had from uh, Rimi, if ever you do have questions during the C packages, I'll answer them um, next time I read the comments. So, his question was, how much sheen do you plant compared to what you want to grow total? For example, if you want 100 tomato plants, how much seeds do you plant? So this all depends of like multiple things. How old are your seeds? The older your seeds are, the poorer the germination rate will be. How do you store your seeds? Do you store them in a cool, dark place or in the sun, in your greenhouse? The more exposed to heat, the more exposed to sunlight, the more the, ge the, the generation, a germination percentage will go down. The type of seed. Uh, some are like super difficult, like um, celeries, some require stratification, and if the stratification is not done properly, it's not going to germinate. Uh, there's also the fact that sometimes like beets and Swiss chard, there's more than one seed inside the package, like inside the little capsule. So it depends a little bit the type of the seed. And usually on some companies, you see germination rate right here, like germ, 93%. So this was tested and they say 93%. Um, okay, so those, with all those, I look at my seed package. If it says 93%, and I bought these this year, I'm maybe gonna show, um, 
a couple more that I need to make sure that I have exactly how many plants that I want. If the seeds are very, 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 very old, I plant at least twice what I need. So if I need 100, I'm going to sow, instead of putting one seed per little hole, I'm going to put two seeds per little hole to make sure that I have at least 100. Uh, same thing with uh, if some like my collection gets neglected sometimes if the seeds are very old and they've been on my table for a long time well this again is I sow more than I need and if ever I have too much this is where my seed sale comes in handy for me if it's an ideal percentage 75 percent I will sow maybe um if I need 12, I'm going to sow 15, maybe 18. If it's cabbages or any brassica family, I struggle so much. Even if my seeds are like super new, super ideal conditions and the germination rate is awesome, I'm going to sow tw twice as much as I need because I struggle so much growing brassicas because this is me. This is one of the only crop that I'm having such a hard time to grow from seeds. The only way that I was able to grow them last year is with um, Marilyn's suggestion. She told me to grow them under row covers in the high tunnel. And this is where I got the most success. So I'm giving another try this year with the education that I'm getting to see uh, if I can get them um, to stop being leggy. From what I'm reading, legginess is caused by uh, being too warm and then cold and then stretching of light. So the light was too high and there was like too much temperature, like temperature variation. And this is why they become so leggy. And then I probably overwater and I have like that disease. Uh, I can't, I can't remember what the disease is, but like, it just goes on, on the side, like it dies. Um, I always show an average of 25 to 30% extra with newer seeds but since i go with my knowledge and every single year and my garden notes it all depends of that also i hope Remy, this answers your question hello mr cubby uh doo -doo 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 -doo. okay the second question i got was from tracy from t hand one for one homestead how do i juggle being a lone homesteader a wife a mom, etc., etc., etc. So the quick answer to that is I have absolutely no idea how I do it all. Uh, there's days that I go to bed and I'm like, <laughs> I look at everything I do and I'm like, it's, it was like, I thought it was impossible to do. But then I would say the complicated -ish answer would be and, Liz, uh, and Lynn will probably laugh at me by saying that. I have lists that has lists. I am super organized. I make sure that my homesteading life is as organized as possible so that I can be a mother and a wife. If I'm not organized in each of my lives, it will not work. So that means I need to plan for dinner. I need to, if it's, my growing season and I am like super overwhelmed this is where I say to my husband I can't do dinner you're gonna have to take care of dinner for for this week and I make it a little bit easier on himself like I give him options like uh, I have tomatoes in the garden we can have tomato sandwiches and there is um we have fries in the uh in the fridge like do this easy sandwich or we have too many eggs I tell him just do something with eggs like, I just don't give him a free pass because then every single night we'll have, like, grilled cheese for dinner. Not that it's wrong, but um, I have all this food coming out of the garden. It would be nice to use it. So being organized, having a planner, uh, a daily planner, a monthly planner, a weekly planner is something that um, I know it sounds a lot, but it's something I need. Um, and... I do my best with what I have and I try not to be too hard on myself. Uh, I give myself at least an objective of five things I have to do. 
during the day. And if I've accomplished that, I'm super happy and I praise myself because I could have just chosen to be overwhelmed and stay in my bed and do nothing. Um, you Well, since I'm a YouTuber, uh, I also have to be as organized as possible. And I am starting to do something literally different. Like today's live was all planned. All of it is planned. And my videos are now going to be planned. So that means I'm going to have an overall idea of what I want to do, an overall idea of what I want to say. Not everything will be written, but that means when I put play, I won't do like 20 takes. I'll do like a couple of takes. And then with my montage, it's not going to be as long. And that means I will be able to, instead of like a 15 minute video to film, will not take me an entire day to edit, publish and all of that. Um, what, did I forget anything? Yeah, I, I do say that I wish that this year I will be able to find someone near me that can homestead sit, farm sit for us, garden sit for us, so that... Uh, I can actually have an entire weekend, two, three days of being a, only a mom and a wife. That would be lovely. Uh, I missed a couple of comments. Uh, I'm not sure him he's here. Is he here? I haven't seen him in a, in a, in a while in the comments. I find it hard to take care of myself and the animals in the gardens. Um, it is hard. It's hard work. But by being organized, um, I should have brought my planner. Um, I'll go get it. I'll show it to you guys. Okay, so this year I invested, can you hear me? I hope you can hear. So this year I invested in a French planner because the English one, the either the shipping was like literally ridiculous and um, or you had to print it and you had to bring it to Staples to get it, um, those things around. So I went with uh, Notre Vie en Famille from Mama Can and somewhere else, someone else and uh, I added a couple of things. See, I added the months. I don't know if you can see. Uh, hold on. I don't want to lose my page. So I added the months here because that was not there. And then um, every month, boop, 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 boop. every month is where I'm always backwards. So every single day that you see something written, this is something I have to sew or transplant and then towards the end of the season this is where I started writing oh, other side so I started writing every single thing that should be getting out of the garden like this is getting out this week this is getting out this week blah 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 approximate so this is one of the things that I'm doing new this year and daily Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Where is my page? Uh, it's so big. Hold on. Uh, okay, there it is. Up, 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 uh. Where's my to do list of this week? Okay, so my papers. Here is like my next video that's planned. The, like the it's called a brain dump but like I had an idea of a video and I just wrote the ideas the guidelines and stuff like that and then every single day this is where I write everything I need to do either on a personal level on a house level or homestead level so if I need I don't know to go get something for myself I don't take for granted that I will remember it I'll I write it down so that I can 
brain dump every single thing I need to do. And then I make sure to cross off every single task that I do because it makes you feel all tingly inside because you were able, regardless of the chaos, you were able to do five things today. And whatever I lacked, I did not have time to do. I put it in pink. So I bring it on the next day. So by doing that, by being ultra organized, I am able to and brain dump all these dates. I, I no longer have it up here. I'm freeing some space here so that I can take care of myself uh, because it is a priority. Uh, do, 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 do. The animals in the garden. This is something I cannot do on my own. The homestead, mainly I can do it on my own, but the animals, I need my husband help. In the garden, well, I can mostly manage it on my own, but like the hard labor stuff, I can't do it on my own. I am convinced some someone broke into our home at night and had things in my <laughs> I'm convinced too, but I write, like they have the same handwriting as me. I don't know why. <laughs> Hello, get to the farm. <laughs> it's like also um, laundry. Laundry used to be hell for me. And then I watched a video about decluttering and like homemaking type video. And she said, don't start a load of laundry. And you're probably going to go like, huh, huh, huh. don't start a load of laundry if you have no intention of finishing it. That means if you start a laundry load, you will take it and put it in the dryer. When she said that, I was like, this hit home like madly. And this is where I decided that I will no longer do six, seven loads of laundry in one day. I refuse to do this. I literally refuse to do that. So those are the two things that I've changed to get organized. I also flipped also things on my personal level. So I do one load of laundry and I make sure to put it in the dryer. The next day, this is where I fold and put away the clothes. And I do this uh, two, three times a week. And the last part is decluttering. I went through my clothes, my kids' clothes, my husband's clothes, and I went like, kook, and there's like four or five bags that left the house. That means you wash less clothes. Um, <laughs> okay. That's not for me. That's not for me. That's not for me. Are you sowing your lufa seeds, Marilyn, soon? We are planning a trip home down east the first week of August, and I'm hoping we can get Aiden's friend to look after our chickens. Nice. Well, the first week of August, you're taking a lot of risk. I have tomatoes coming out of every single, like, dot, dot, dot. Um, I hope that um, he will be able to harvest your tomatoes and put them in the um, in the freezer. Hello, Ren's Homestead. I'm guessing this is Lindsay or Jack. I'm gonna say hi, both of you. Marcy, I have a half package of loofah left. I am planting all of them. If they take, I will bring some starts. I mean, nice. I am really hoping I am successful with them this year. This year, well, last year, I was able to sow the seeds, get the seedling going, and then I put them in the high tunnel. And I kind of used them as weeds because I literally forgot. Like, the tag fell, and I did not plant the tag next to the um, <laughs> plant. And I killed it. <laughs> ah, I killed it. So I hope this year I don't kill my loofah plant. Time to take care of my chickens. I'll be back. Who's saying lies? Is it me that's saying lies? I hope not. I'd never, ever, ever get any laundry done if I didn't just throw it. 
Uh, yeah, well, I used to do that. I used to do six, seven loads of laundry. And then during the weekend, I had this Everest mountain of laundry on my couch. And then I would look at it and say, oh, and dread. And then fold it and then put it in baskets and then putting it next to the rooms, hoping they would all put away their clothes. But because it was large, a large, big basket of clothes to be put away, it took days. And sometimes the week after, the basket was still there. And I just added more clothes onto the basket. So by doing that, they are motivated to put away a small amount of laundry. And they don't complain that much or complain as as much, I should say, because it's like a couple of pair of pants, a little bit of socks, underwears, and stuff like that. So I'm hoping this trick lasts. But when in the deep of the summer, maybe things will change. At least once a month, a particular load will end up going through six times. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Um, I used to do laundry with not hope, like not investing myself to complete it. I would wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it. It was a never end, a never ending story. But I'm I'm saying this now. It's in the colder months, and I'm, I'm I feel great about all these changes. But let's see if I can continue doing it <laughs> in the summer. That's a whole not another <laughs> different ball game. Jack doesn't do laundry. That um, my husband. I complain about a lot of things, but he cooks and he does laundry. He hates folding, but if I give him the choice of folding. Or putting away clothes, he's going to fold. So sometimes I put that into use. Uh, I'll have some for you, Madeline. Okay, so I'd be so upset if he messed up my laundry system. Yes, yeah, somehow there is a system. <laughs> uh, that's when winter is a blessing. The cool temp saves many rewash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the summer... Uh, if I am blessed enough to keep on and keep at this laundry hack that I'm starting, uh, I'll share how I manage to include it in my daily basic like life of like one laundry and then put it in the dryer and then fold it the next day. I, I'll see how I can get all of that working this summer and share if it was a success or not. Um. Jason does his own laundry. He says they are gross, and so why make me? Yeah, uh, my husband's clothes, work clothes, is full of stains and grease and stuff like that when he was a technician. Now he installs instead of repairs, so it's a little bit less. But before, I used to do a, a one with his clothes, and then the rest after. But we're five. Sometimes I feel we're 20 or there was a party inside of my house and I wasn't there or wasn't invited because like I see technically by doing that, you're not supposed to see more than a couple of pair of pants per each person. But sometimes I see a lot more than what should be there. So it gets me thinking there was a party in my house and I wasn't invited. How, how dare them? <laughs> Well, I said everything I wanted to say. Do I have any questions or people want to share something exciting going on? Because it's almost lunch for me. I can hear my stomach going. <clears throat> Did I read everyone's comment? <clears throat> oh, there's one last thing I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I know that this was a mark of a thousand subscribers and like milestones in my life, but there is a milestone that I wanted to keep you guys in the loop. And that was if I had qualified for, um, being paid by YouTube. Sadly, no. But in the month of January, I've been like going up 
and down, up and down. So I went to the lowest I went was 231. And then I was going back to 265. But this morning, something has changed. This morning, I was at three, three, seven, eight, four. 216 hours. So I think last week's live has made a humongous difference. And uh, I think if I am able to do this every single Thursday and I have questions to answer or a specific subject to talk about, uh, I think that it could happen very soon. Um, I will not teach my kids right now how to do laundry. Not at the moment, unless, uh, like, my mom has gifted me, like, this uh, capsule um, that you just throw in the, um, in, in the washer. Uh, I could teach my kids to do that. But uh, like Lindsay said, uh, I would be too terrified that they would um, <laughs> screw up my clothes. My husband, not that bad. Uh, but, um, my kids, I would be very, 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 very <laughs> worried. Thank God I don't have bleach in reach for them <laughs> because, um, it would be, it would be, um, it would be ugly. Yes. So this is the lowest I have been 216 hours away. That's not, that's not, that's not that much. Um, thank you. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful age. My daughter just turned 10. Maybe if she's mature enough, around 12, she's going to start doing her own laundry and she's going to stop using four or five pair of pants in one day. <laughs> she's going to learn. Um, I used to be like that when I was at work, like I had like fancy clothes and all of that, but, um, all of my clothes are like hand-me-downs in bought used. Some of my clothes are like not expensive cause I'm super cheap. <laughs> I love seed and I'm cheap, <laughs> but, uh, like I do want to have them for a very long time. So that's why I do my own laundry. Hello, Marilyn. I was just about to leave. My stomach is like growling hungry. Yes, talking about laundry. Uh, a couple of hacks I have changed to make my life easier so I no longer do six loads of laundry in one day and have a humongous Everest pile of laundry. Because, like, I feel sometimes there was a party of 20 in my house and I wasn't invited. Um, mm -mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm thrifty. <laughs> well, sweat is 100% cotton, so they will shrink if you, put, if you buy them too tight, if they're 100% cotton. Before, when we moved here, I had a uh, clothes wire inside of the house and I used to hang my clothes. But um, with bad ventilation, uh, there was a lot of moisture in the air and uh, I didn't like, sometimes like there was this like weird smell. And if I am to do that, I will need like this... Um, I need to look into it. Maybe it's just my house that does that. But there was a lot of, like, moisture in, in the house, and I didn't like it. Um, but he also broke my clothesline outside. Like, he backed up the truck, and the boom was extended. <laughs> he forgot to put the boom down. And um, he ripped <laughs> my clothesline off of the house last year. So I want to ask him to put back the clothesline so I can stop using the dryer, at least during the spring up till the fall. But there is one sad thing about my clothesline is it's attached to uh, the post that it's attached to is next to a cedar hedge. 
in cedars, there's so many spiders that uh, when I bring back the clothes in, I have to shake it to make sure that there's no lovely spiders inside of my stuff. You know, because I love spiders. I'm not scared of spiders at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure if I would figure out a system to remove the moisture and hang my clothes, it would save me a lot. Mm. Towels, I always use the dryer. It just takes forever to dry on a clothesline. Uh, hello, Marcus Mustard, Mustard. I hope I'm saying it right. Well, you guys, I'm starving. I hope all of this was very helpful. If you have more questions or there's things I have not answered, um, just let me know. Now I'll write them down. Or if uh, during a video you see something and you would like to either ask a question, I will note this. And then on Thursday, next Thursday, I will make sure to answer it uh, for you guys. I'm doing more and more online shopping just more. Thank you. Bon appétit, like we say in French, and I will chat with you guys on Sunday. Take care, everyone. Bye.